And the sun will be here again. That's just what came to me when you were playing. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So I just let it come. Yeah. That's awesome. That was fun. Yeah. It's I, I feel better. <laughs> You know, I know uh, we covered quite a lot in the first interview, but since then, you know, we've been in contact quite often and I was really touched by the uh, testimonials you sent me from the veteran um, yeah. that uh, had really had a healing effect from your music. And I know you've been working with traumatized veterans to help them heal using your music. How have they responded and... and um, Maybe you can share how that's all unfolding and what you're up to with the veterans, because that's a group of people that has really struggled to find um, find their center in many ways. Yeah. So we're working with two groups. There's a group in, in uh, Seattle, oh, Tacoma, Washington area, uh, called Veterans Rights, and they are working with it uh, on a weekly and monthly basis there with the guys. And um, the feedback, you know, I've done some sessions with them live over Zoom, and it's just been really amazing, the the testimonials and feedback of, like, everything from pain relief to just releasing trauma, you know, crying tears mm. and just let goes, you know, um, mm -hmm. and just people saying it's really helped their overall mental stability, um, having that, you know, new piece that a lot of them had never explored music in that way. So that was really powerful, and just the ongoing process of that, they're finding new ways to implement it into different programs with the veterans. And then on the East Coast, we're working with a, a woman who started a thing called the Sound Bar, which is basically utilizing our music and a spa situation where people come in with headphones and there's little meditation cushions and they sit down and take uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes out of their day to, to devote towards meditation. Mm. So veterans started coming into her sound bar and the veterans, uh, one of the one the testimonials that we're going to have on video very soon, uh, there was a veteran that was on 13 medications mm. and just in a month of working with the music through the sound bar, he's down to two pills wow. and major changes in his life and he just was raving you know to the sound bar about how powerful this was that he started bringing other veteran friends to experience this and so it's just something that now we're setting up a clinical trial with the veterans uh, with a PhD candidate that is really interested in how this music is affecting you know, the overall mental stability and just health of these veterans. So it's, it's going to be really cool this coming year to see that clinical trial go. How do you access that music when you're creating it? Or it, it do, you, do you find the traumatized, broken parts of yourself and, and use that as the vehicle of, of how to structure the music in order to bring about a, a shift in yourself, knowing that there's parallels between other people or, or how do you how do you do that well I think there's two ways uh, one is by creating a, a music album that is the collective energy you know using the astrology information that's coming in mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to not c prepare the music in a way that was from just a selfish standpoint you mm -hmm. know so it was basically looking at those energies that are coming in and saying with a group of people, you know, uh, astrologers and, and having conversations. Um, well, what chakras do you think are affected by this? And then having these conversations with a group of people that are part of my team. And then I go into meditation, you know, before I create the music. And in the beginning, I've been doing this for seven years now, you know, creating this mu these albums. In the beginning, I think it was really painful because it was almost like a method actor who would go revisit this pain or trauma and pull it into this moment mm -hmm. for the scene, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that eventually I started looking at it in a different way over the years, you know, that maturity. Um, I remember Greg Braden talking about going to visit a, a, a rain dance mm -hmm. ceremony. That's a powerful ceremony. Yeah, and he said that he was expecting this elaborate production, you know, that it was going to be this big deal. And he said this guy drove him to the top of a mountain. They stood there. He bowed his head. A few minutes, he looked up. He goes, okay. 
we're ready. <laughs> and so he said a few minutes later, the rain started, you know, coming. And he said that this guy was so evolved in his practice that it was just straight to spirit, you know, just. And so instead of me visiting those hard parts, I started really looking at the perspective shift of um, wanting to be a part of that humbling situation of being a part of the release work and the healing and just really asking spirit to work through me in those meditations and to just really prepare something that was going to be utilized in a wide variety of pl a whole plethora of different situations for people and just trying to provide uh, the channel for that to happen. And so, you know, you can't please everyone all the time, but hopefully you do, mm. you know, in, in the creation of that album, p people find something that they really connect to and respond with. Well, yeah, you can't please everybody all the time, but, you know, Jung speaks of the objective psyche. Are you familiar with that concept? Yes. So inside the objective psyche, you, you have all the archetypes, and you have all the forces of consciousness or the psyche that are common to all of us. So, you know, you can have the the wounded warrior, right, which is a part of the archetype of the warrior, and then you can access the archetype of the wounded warrior. And so, because there's something common in all wounded warriors, right? They're like, they're, they're warriors, they're wounded. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, you know, many, many paralleling themes, right? So, yeah. uh, it, you know, it could be everything like from the pain of separation, the loss of brotherhood, the, um, the trauma of having to kill people yeah. that are human beings, um, the fear of not coming home and the fear often of coming home mm. because sadly, you know, soldiers used to get a warm reception when they come home, but, you know, Vietnam was kind of the beginning of a shift in the psyche of, I would say, the Western population at least where they came home to this sort of emptiness, you know. Right. And then they're coming into a world that moves very, very slowly compared to the intensity of what they're used to. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up is I'm curious when you when you're working with the astrological energies, how are you engaging those energies? Basically, each month, what I'm trying to do is accentuate the more playful energies and kind of alleviate, uh, have things that are set up to either ground or release, dissipate, create movement of stagnant energy in an individual. And so we're working with everything from body organ frequencies to chakra frequencies, but also planetary frequencies. So um, if there's a planet that's in heavy, you know, a heavy energy or like a retrograde or something like that, we want to do something that puts it in a direct, using that frequency, setting an intention, and then using that as if it were direct. So you're creating a balance and the individual who's working with that. And sometimes even on personal, like frequency coaching sessions, we'll even work with a person's, you know, Western and Vedic astrology mm -hmm. and, the, and the creation of custom tracks for them. So it mm -hmm. just really depends on the approach, but... I mean, though, are you working it with it with it by reading an astrological report and then using your mind's concepts of what each planet, house, moon, star represents? Or are you opening yourself to those intelligences and letting them speak through you directly? How are, how are you making that? bridging the gap between the objective psyche and your instruments. Yeah, we're trying I'm trying to do both. So that's what I'm doing is creating something where we're getting a report. I'm having discussion with the astrologers directly. We're having open conversations and then I'm going into meditation and doing a channeling which is basically taking that information into account. Mm -hmm. But then also of oftentimes there's times when I'm in those reports and I'm like, okay, I have an idea based on this conversation where we're going with this and then I get into the the meditation and the channeling and it's completely different. I've even had things where I've lost complete songs like they just got deleted yeah, completely. Yeah, you were telling me about that a while yeah. back. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the losing of the complete song, what do you think that is? 
I think it's spirit moving me in a different direction. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Just to <laughs> yeah, say, yeah. yeah. No, this isn't it. This isn't it. So yeah. let's go with something new. And a lot of times, even this this past month for the October album, I had two songs that were ready to go, and spirit just really moved me in the last three days to create two new tracks from scratch. And I just felt very positive about them and the placement of the album, and just they came through in just a very open and clear, direct way that they just let me know they were supposed to be on that album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It, you know, uh, it, it brings up a uh, thought in me. Um, there's a lot of PTSD from COVID now. I mean, yeah. geez, especially amongst the kids. Um, you got your guitar there. I'm curious, could you kind of let your soul play some trauma healing music for everybody that's found themselves in a broken family in a broken hearted situation because of covid yeah so some of my favorite chords are these these kind of jazz chords these they just have a very powerful feeling to them the, mm -hmm. and then when you put them together in progressions they just have really they're just beautiful to me mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of the people when we put these these chords and these progressions together have really powerful movement in their body mm -hmm. and so i'll just do a little finger picking very inspired by uh the beatles so the, that's the uh, blackbirds by the beatles right uh -huh. so by taking those kind of uh, progr like finger picking styles and turning it into some of these chord progressions like clouds begging for rain to wash away my pain haven't got time haven't got time for pain soon enough the clouds will part and the sun will be here again. That's just what came to me when you were playing. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So I just let it come. Yeah. That's awesome. That was fun. Yeah. It's I, I feel better. 